Hi guys, welcome back to The Average. Before we start with this book paint over, I've got a few things to announce that I hope you'll be excited by. First of all, I restocked my horror comic in my Etsy store, so if you fancy taking a look at that, then the link is down below. It is selling out pretty fast, so if you want to grab a copy, I hope that you won't be disappointed. But if you see that they are sold out, then let me know if you want one and I will restock them again. Also, Artex have given me the opportunity to help you guys out win some lovely goodies. So first off, we have the opportunity to win this Paul Rubens sketchbook, this amazing gouache paints that I recently reviewed that a lot of you seem to like, and some pens. If you would like the opportunity to win these awesome items, they ship internationally so it's open to everyone. We have two of each up for grabs so there's going to be two winners. So if you want to know how to win these prizes then stick around till the end where I will let you know how. Okay, on to the paint over. So the next book in this series of book paint overs that I have decided to do is Crazy Rich Asians. A small disclaimer here if you're new to this channel and you are mortally offended by people loving books and giving more life to them then I guess you should just leave but if you want to stick around and see me change this cover to something that I prefer because I do not like movie covers on books then stick around to see that the whole idea behind these book paint overs is that I prefer books to have a bit more personality to them than the movie covers and I think movie covers are just on books to help sell the movie and it kind of helps sell the book a little bit I prefer like a more stylized product than a photo on a book and you may disagree with that and that's totally fine that's your decision but today we are gonna delete this movie cover which actually I don't think is too bad I just recently read Crazy Rich Asians this week and I think the film cover actually kind of suits the style of book that it is I haven't seen the film yet, but I'm intending to watch it later. But I think this cover overall is alright. There are some elements to it that I'm not a huge fan of. I really like the embossing and the gold um, lettering here. Sometimes I don't put titles on books or the author's name because I just like that to have a piece of a book with just a stylized cover on it. So I think that might be the case today. I might just be painting something and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet. So we're going to dive into it. So about the book, I really enjoyed this fun story. It is a bit of fun, it's not super serious, it's about a couple called um, Nick and Rachel and Nick is a Singaporean, very rich, rich dude. His family are supposedly billionaires in the book and it's kind of about how much crazy wealth that they have and her coming to meet his family in Singapore and realizing that she definitely doesn't fit in with this crowd who are wanting to give her the cold shoulder and it's the classic story of you're not good enough for our rich family and I am here for it. I really enjoyed the book. I think one criticism that I could give it was that the main characters seemed a little bit too perfect, like the couple they just, they didn't really have any faults which is, I really enjoy reading about flawed characters and I guess they're supposed to be the moral grounding for the whole story because every other character is a little bit quirky and out there with their money and not really morally decent in some ways, in some ways they are and I like I like that because I think fundamentally most people are flawed so it makes it more realistic but I enjoyed it. I think of course you have to have these two being quite um, reasonably good as people because otherwise it would just be a totally unhinged story and you wouldn't really root for any of the characters so of course you wanted the main couple to be good and you wanted to see them succeed because they are the only good people in a bad crowd. I really enjoyed reading about all this uh, crazy lifestyle that people lead in Singapore in these rich families and how they have thousands of thousands of dollars to spend on all sorts of items and you know like crazy amounts of jewellery, houses, houses like multiple houses in different countries, how they had private jets and I mean, it's fun to imagine living in that world a little bit especially when you're never gonna reach that kind of level of richness and I think like the main character it didn't really bother like money didn't bother her but I think anybody who's struggled financially would go into a world like that and be 
totally out of depth. It, it's like, it would be like a culture shock, really, I, I'd say. So what I thought would be cool to do for the cover is do something completely different, quite wacky and abstract, because I wanted her to be the main feature, because I do feel like she is the main pivotal character in the story. I know there is Nick and her, but I feel like she is the the root of the story so I think I wanted to make her the central figure of the cover because it's mainly about her struggle I don't think Nicholas really struggles in this except for the fact that people are picking on his girlfriend but he doesn't really realize that until the end so I think the whole story is focused on her She's the centralised figure of this uh, cover and then I wanted to have sort of abstract shapes to indicate the sort of culture shock that maybe she was feeling throughout the book and beautiful things happening on around her and I think that indicates the sort of mood and feel of the book without giving too much away so I hope that that works. So to talk about the illustration a little bit more or the process of it rather I had a little bit of struggle with this book cover because when I laid down the Poskas I think the cover is a bit too glossy for the Poskas so this time around it was a little bit difficult to use them and layer them so I do like a layer and then wait a little while for it to dry and then layer them again and see if that worked and in some places it's a little bit patchy so I decided to go in with the gouache paints, the Mia gouache paints, and layer those up instead. I remember the first time I used gouache on a book cover, layers of the paint peeled off a little bit, so I didn't want to use too much of it. I was trying to be very economic with the way that I was using this paint. So I went in with the metallic pens, and I also drew the fish that appear on the picture. Separately cut them out and stuck them on. Instead of fighting that media, I just thought what I would do is just stick down some cut out fish because I thought that worked better and in the end I think it looks nicer as well because they sort of are popping out and it gives a little bit more a more dynamic feel to the overall picture and I think that works so I used a lot of these metallic pens throughout this image because I thought that they would work really well with the style of the original cover with the metallic um, type on the front and throughout the book is very much about jewels and richness so I thought it would make sense to have a sparkly type of cover with elements of this metallic pen and also these metallic pens work really well on the cover and I think these are really opaque pens, I really enjoy them and yeah, that's it. And I will see you in a second for the final reveal. Okay, so I think that's the final paint over. I think it's missing something a little bit in this area, but I'm not really sure what to do, and I think I'm afraid of overworking it at this point. So this is the final look of the book, and I'm really pleased with how the metallic pens sort of worked out on this. I think it really works well with the kind of content within the book, with all the, you know, crazy money and richness and shininess, and I really like this. I think the fish popping out really works quite well. If you've read the story, then you might know the significance of a fish and I think it tied well up to into what I was saying before about her being the moral centre of the story and in this abstract world of like this cultural shock and yeah that's the final book paint over and I hope you enjoyed it. Now to talk a little bit about the competition again if you would like to win what I said in the beginning the Mia gouache paints which are these ones the watercolour pens and a Paul Rubens watercolour sketchbook please make sure that you are following both Artex and me on Instagram and just comment on the picture of this book saying that you would like to win. That's all you have to do really and yeah I wish you all the luck with that and I think it's a pretty cool prize. Don't forget it's international so anyone can enter and there's going to be two winners so you have more chances to win. Thanks for watching and if you haven't hit that subscribe button then please uh, take a little presage down below. That'll be awesome of you and you can become an averager. Doesn't sound that appealing but maybe you would enjoy it. I don't know. And okay, that's the end of the video. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.